So I, I think hopefully if he's able to at least put up a little more impact, I think Fnatic would have won the last map. So I think they'll carry on to this map in a way to um, hopefully he will have a big game. Yeah, we'll see. As the pistol round commences here, it looks like there's a light utility on the T side here, but a very heavy ramp setup, actually, and Crims will be the first to strike. He actually finds two of his own early on here, and it looks like Heroic are being stopped right in their tracks. That's a great flash as well, right at their feet. And there are three players up for Fnatic here, and they're backing off this ramp position. They will give Heroic this space. Yeah, it's definitely not ideal to be in a two versus three, but it's definitely... More, uh, more ideal to be on the, the T side of that. Um, so we'll see if they can find a way to, to deal with this. The Solve Angle is going to be just crushing, though. I don't think they'll expect this, although JW with a couple of shots there. Oh, <laughs> wow, that? that's so smart. That's 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 actually so smart. Like, you see, in, in that sense, you're kind of expecting to probably die, but you just want it to take long enough that your teammate can guarantee the trade. So it's all on Nico now in a 1v2, and... He's definitely capable of, of this. They have no idea, where, again, they have no idea where he could possibly be going with so much time left on the clock. So they're in this spot where they have to kind of, like, you know, where, where do you even decide to position? It's kind of difficult to figure out what the optimal spots will be to play as two players. I think the safe bet in these kind of situations is play spots where you can hear the bomb, know exactly where he's at, and just wait for your teammate. <sighs> Obviously, he's going to... The timing of that. Never mind. Oh, he has to break the glass. Oh, no, in fact, the glass is already broken. Oh. When he, surely he checks this. If he checks this, that would be huge. Oh, my God. He's going to check it, isn't he? Here we go. Oh, okay. One versus one. And Nico is on for the clutch. Oh, oh he's wow. nailed it. Oh, if Flusher had appeared a couple seconds earlier, that would have been a wrap. See, Golden, I think, made a huge mistake right there. Not because he was kind of spotted and stuff, but the way he positioned himself in these kind of scenarios, just let the person plant the bomb and make sure that you just have a good uh, position after so he I has the bomb and you can work with your teammate in that scenario. Because right there, this, he's put himself in such a terrible spot. Obviously, it was lucky for Nico to be right there, but you have to expect those kind of things, you know? You have to play smarter than that. Right, right, right. Well, well, that's got the Nova. He's got the, he's got the shoddy. I think it's the auto shoddy. Is it the auto shoddy? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it yeah. is. Yeah. Auto shoddy and nuke. Man, I need to get some glasses. We all do. <laughs> yeah, I gotta bring mine tomorrow. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was having some trouble with this, but somehow Fnatic actually pulling this one out for themselves, off the back of some good scout kills. Uh, without glasses, maybe an op. No, I'm just kidding. Of course, it's not an op on the second <laughs> round. But <laughs> no, uh, but it just leaves Nico once again. He pulled out a 1v3 in the previous round, but he will have no shot at the 1v4 here. And Fnatic able to steal one there. Kind of a lobby crunch coming out between scouts, auto shotties, what have you. And that's the kind of chaos and confusion we know that Fnatic can thrive in. Heroic, on the other hand, with a more ramp-centric approach, but are stopped right in their tracks. And because they didn't get a bomb down, like if they had gotten a bomb down, the extra $800 per player would have allowed them to have a nade set. Everyone could have a nade set and they could like run an upper set piece. And something like that in a round like this would be super, super good. But unfortunately, they don't have that option. In fact, they have opted to have no nades, more or less. So, and <laughs> Golden's, he's got the MAC-10 out there. It's not going to go all too well. It almost feels like it wasn't even worth it to invest anything into this round. It's one of those things that's, where it's like, you have to figure out what is your objective. If you're, if you're gonna purchase armor and a deagle or just a deagle and no armor and no nades, and, and you're, not, you're likely not getting position because it's the utility that gives you position, generally speaking. So you're working for like picks. So, so there we saw like no utility, and they're just, but they're at the same time, they're trying to rush. That's yeah. good and point, so it's like, then. so you, you, you kind of want to be playing more for picks there. And they just kind of threw all their stuff away. So that's a pretty smart point because, as, as you mentioned, that you know a lot of teams like to get rid, you know, have the those rounds kind of over with, you know. But as you said, they just have deeks and armor. Try to pick them up, go for picks, and then maybe regroup after get a number advantage or we'll kind of whittle down the CT. Yeah, because. Yeah, I mean, if they had been able to get just like one or two kills, which I think is really definitely a very reasonable ask with, with so many, de like just deagles, then 
then they're in a pretty good... Sp that's all you really want to be able to... That's like the most realistic goal that you can actually accomplish. Because getting a bomb down, winning a round's pretty... You can't rely on... There's, there's nothing that you can you can say, well, we've got a setup with two smokes and max armor and eagles yeah, to achieve that. Especially in a map like Nuke, where the CTs are kind of more condensed in a like rotational spot other than like an... Um, let's say a mirage. We have to run across the map to s to switch bomb sites. You know. Absolutely. Well, and what sucks in this round is that they have a full buy, but they have enormous no nades, which is really unfortunate. So they have to play for picks here as well, and the utility advantage is certainly going to come in handy for the Fnatic. They've already managed to find a kill onto Nico. We, we will have the outside smokes, obviously, at the, straight at the beginning of the round. Interesting oh. that they disappear. <laughs> oh, wow. Are they trying to cross or are they trying to like? What, are the, what is the plan here? All well, right. I guess. Well, looks like it's doing okay for them. They're getting a lot of space towards the garage, but the bomb does fall, and one of one of the the only remaining smokes on the heroic side. Kadian uses it rather defensively to try to secure his position, just buying time for Stown perhaps, as he may be able to find a kill here. He's coming up heaven right now. And flicking between these two positions is JW, and Stown is oh, oh no! waits too long and gets taken out. JW, he was oh flicking between God. those positions just seconds ago, and he clears it out. And Stown, I mean, he knew he needed some kind of hero play, uh, but he's not even even able to find one. Man. And, and this was an interesting approach from Heroic here. They throw the typical cross smokes, and yeah, as they were fading, we just see them there sitting in the smokes, and it's kind of playing off of the advantage you get from sitting in the smokes that you usually can see out of them better than people can see into them, and they hope to find something. But when it fails right there, now you're just without position yeah. and you're stuck outside, and it's not the best spot to be in. It's a little bit gimmicky at that, and yeah, it just doesn't work. And, and that advantage, too, is something that, like, if you're long range, it's it's pretty sketchy. I, I don't understand, but that's cool. That's JW. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really risky to just sit at them. As yeah. they fade. It, yeah. it kind of seems like against any team that would work, Fnatic would be the team because probably someone is right there in the smoke with you, actually, a lot of the time. So I an interesting attempt for Heroic. I'm interested in how yeah. they theory crafted that one, but uh, it just doesn't pan out. It it could have looked genius, in all honesty, yeah. against the right team at the right time. It's it's going to be interesting to see what their, their tempo is around. We can expect to see the outside smokes every round, but you, the thing that you want to do is alternate the timings and it's pretty important that you do it straight away because you need to show you to you to represent to Fnatic by with some evidence that we will actually cross these smokes mm -hmm. so you, you actually have to prove that that's going to be the case some of the time so that they will respect those smokes later on when in spots where you maybe don't go behind the smokes so we'll see how that kind of how that story develops in this round we see that it's going to be an upper attack we, we don't have too much utility in the hands of Heroic. They've got those pistols. They're looking for a quick uh, bomb plant, perhaps. Maybe a couple kills. And uh, actually, no, I, I was mistaken. They're going to go for a... Try to get a split going down lower. A couple players around Squeaky. JW's in a good spot here around um, the... Uh, my brain is control blanking. Doors. Thank you, control doors. <laughs> Wait, JW didn't buy this oh! Uh, <laughs> you're baited. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely baited. I guess he didn't buy a gun. That's interesting. I, I'm not sure why he had a deagle, but now it's a 4v4, and this gets a little bit scary if you're on the side of Fnatic. Up close is Stalin with a Tech-9, and this become, this gun has become so dangerous, and we can see why he's able to take down one, but that might be the only kill for Heroic. They're looking to try to still fight in this round, but the defuse has begun, and it's bore up, and he oh! gets the knife, but just a second too late. <laughs> Fnatic able to win it off of defuse. Oh, <laughs> that oh so man. Close. I thought that was it. <laughs> yeah. Got it. it was so close. That's so crazy because he actually got the right click, one kill. Oh, oh so close. timing! Wow, wow, wow! Yeah, just a half second. That's. Uh, I mean, it's, at least that's some extra cash in the in the bank in the coffers. That's a lot of cash. Man. So we should see the. Uh, I would be surprised. Like this is a. They should probably run the outside smokes. I don't know if, if it looks like they're planning to go for a really fast push into Rab here. So we'll see how that goes exactly. Flush is going to throw the molly. He's going to fall back. He's going to get a... Well, Prolam's going to get a kill. So uh, a three... Oh, sorry, a two for one. That's that's okay if they can get the bomb down. 
It's a nice kill from JW, though, causing problems from control doors. Tessus goes to the plant here. This is going to be really hard for Kuroic, honestly, to recover from. There has to be some kind of monster play here from Nico. The smoke will be fading, but Fnatic know that it's likely that the opposing players are just sitting in it. Nico, he knows he has to back off. He can't take that fight yet. There's too much spam going through it. And him and Tessus actually have solidified a pretty good defense here. On the rafters is Tessus, and he could come up big for his teammate. He is able to find one, looking for more. He gets a second, a third, actually, for Tessus. What a spray from him. And Nico now has to try to close out this 1v1 here. The tap comes in, the defuse, the full stick is coming oh, out. Oh. And he wow. does secure the round. I can't believe that. These rounds are just so close. What a great spray down from Tessus. This was fantastic. Again, just a great display of how mechanically awesome Tessus is. He has he has really bad posture though, I will say. Objectively, his posture is probably the worst of any pro I've seen, so that's <laughs> something I hope that he fixes. <laughs> like but literally how he sits? Yes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, it's it's, it's um I'm pr I'm pretty certain that it's it is Tessus I'm thinking of. Cuz I remember noting it at flashpoint I was like, "Whoa." The way he's sitting in his chair. You know, some yeah, back problems. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like this. Oh, no, I'm feeling camera can't see, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll show you guys later. Um, but hopefully he fixes that. But his mechanics are are unreal. So, um, so yeah, that's that's gonna be what it takes for Heroic to pick up another round. These rounds have been really insane. Like some of the <laughs> yeah. the one v ones that we've seen that, that you know where it comes down to the millisecond. It's uh, it's been it's been a crazy ride. But Fnatic are on the better end of things. They got five rounds. And I think, for me, you know, Heroic, I would expect them to, if they're going to win this, I think it's off the back of a strong T-side. So right now, I feel like Fnatic are doing what they need to to, to win this game by denying Heroic uh, uh, too many rounds on that T-side of theirs. Oh. That's aggressive. That's great. That's a great timing for Fnatic to go oh, by spouse side. Oh, JW. He wants to return the favor. He wants the knife. Oh, he's going to give it up? <gasps> Oh, oh, oh. Just wants the positional advantage, it there looks like. Go. All right. Eventually gets the kill. Okay. But pulls his own knife out a little late on it <laughs> and does get taken down for it. It's a 3v2 situation, but actually the HP in total is in favor of Fnatic right now. And this may bode well for them, depending on how they decide to set up their defense here. And that HP is going to continue to bite them as Tessus and Borup are sitting very low right now. Brolin... Now securing outside position may... No, he won't be faced off with anyone, as a matter of fact. And Tessus, because of his low HP, will pick up the AWP, looking for that one-shot kill. Now Borup will press on forward towards ramp now. And a little bit of a fake being sold right now by Tessus. Some upper nades around mini. This will give Brolin an opportunity to push on forward. Now Flusha, who's stuck behind that smoke at mini, wants to connect up with Brolin at some point in this round, but it looks like it was all a ruse, and Heroic have made their way down ramp at this point. This is a really cool game in Nuke, actually. We're getting so many like interesting mid-round scenarios yes. um, so far, and Flusha will make his way down the vent. Is the sound cue of that drop is going to give some amount of expectation to Heroic. You can see Tessus is lining it up with that AWP. Looking down the control stairs whilst Flusher makes his way to decontamination. And Borup and Tessus, they're in pretty good spots overall here. I think Borup's position is definitely... I mean, the both positions are fairly ex uh, predictable, but... Tessus picks up that kill onto Brolan, and that's going to force Flush it. Oh, he's going to go out and take the kill onto Tessus, forcing Brolin to go for the spray down. He's got to be able to find this. Oh, he's whipping oh. absolutely every single bullet in the hold, and the smoke is good enough. Flusher oh. has Ooh. played them. Six to two for Fnatic off the back of that excellent moment from Flusher. How many of these rounds are going to come down to sprays or knives through smoke? This <laughs> game has been determined like, by these. It's like we're watching Vertigo right now. Yeah, just the, that A site just being just the desperation of defuse attempts here and there. And yeah, it's a really tense game thus far. Heroic, though, off of that, uh, despite losing the round, 
Uh, they find the plant and we're able to inflict quite a bit of damage. And so this may be a pretty pivotal round in the half, actually. Both teams on pretty low economy at this point. Oh my god. And this is just a dry approach towards outside. Stown is able to pick up a kill somehow towards inner, it looks like. And he will be traded out, but now Heroic have full control of these lower halls at this point. And he'll be moving up through control right now. Now, Flusha knows this is an option for them. And he'll be playing on top of the rafter with his favorite gun, the MP9. Now drops behind the silo. He's no able to find way. one. Wow. He's able to keep himself alive. 2v4 at this point. And Heroic, they don't have the bomb. It's out in the open. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> okay. Golden. Golden with a bit of a 1G there. I don't understand. Somehow dying to his own Molotov. I'm assuming Flush was behind that single box and lower and just spilled on him? Or I don't know. No, he's, uh, here's his body, so I don't know. <laughs> Must uh, be a big miscom. Maybe he just ran into it. That, that was <laughs> just <laughs> yeah. felt like it. Maybe he wants Golden off the team, you know? <laughs> 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 he kills with Molotov all the time. Look at it. <laughs> Way to incite a little bit of a... Just kidding, guys. It's not serious. Don't do a witch run. <laughs> So, I mean, Flush is just that passage of play from Flush, though, is fa like just fantastic. How three players are oncoming, he's able to get the first kill, the Molotov separates, the other two isolates another in 1v1. Just just fantastic stuff from Flusher. Yeah, the ability to stay alive there. And off of very little information as well, uh, knowing that they could be down lower, I, I don't even know if they were actually spotted by an individual on the Fnatic side, but they knew that option was just completely available for Heroic, so... Good read from them, good rotations. And Kadian just wants to keep this op alive into the upcoming round. 7-2 to two score lane, though, and uh, like you were saying earlier, Dan, this looks to be uh, Fnatic doing a very good job here on the CT side. Uh, Heroic probably needed a, a handful of rounds here on T side to uh, try to catch Fnatic off guard with a couple of their set plays, but it doesn't look like they've been working out for them. Yeah, certainly. It's, it's, it must have already rougher heroic because they have had so many clutches which it must feel like they could have won but i like the response that heroic had in the previous rounds because they decided to go super fast with no smokes outside and i can only imagine one of the reasons to do that is that um they've, they're trying to find a timing a super fast timing that will punish fanatic if fanatic have a fast outside setup so you kind of catch fanatic whilst they're trying to get into position and the reason why the CTs can often get into those positions is because the Ts are actually, you know, lining up the smokes. So they're actually sacrificing their fast timing to line the smokes up. So by not throwing them, you're able to catch the CTs off guard if they are aggressive there, which Fnatic showed a couple rounds ago. And that was very disruptive for Heroic. So uh, both teams are playing pretty well at the moment, which is, is cool to see for sure. Big round for Heroic. They really need to get some more T sides and get a comfortable cushion. You know, get a team like Fnatic. You just never know. They could just go off. Yeah. Definitely want to get a little bit more. These rounds have been so close, but it's been Fnatic who's been winning most of them. And right now, Heroic with a slightly slower default approach. They will end up throwing some outside smokes, it looks like. Not necessarily the standard ones, but will help them isolate a couple angles. It looks like they'll be going for kind of a, a hell wrap of sorts with their their posturing as of now. We'll see though, JW taking a lot of burn damage right there, down to 34 already. That is a little bit unfortunate for him and it should be an easy kill now actually. And it is requiring a lot of space and man, whatever their plan was it, earlier in this round, those three kills mean that they just have to group up at this point. Yeah, absolutely. And they will do as such, moving down to the lower bomb side for the plant, clearing things responsibly, diligently, as you want to see. And Crims will take down the lurking Borup. Now, stuff like that's a little bit scary because it's suddenly. <laughs> It creates a scenario where Fnatic might think about going for it. And if they get like lucky on another timing, suddenly it's a 2v2 and they're actually going for it. And so you got to be careful with that, but they will decide to hold off. And uh, Heroic will pick up a round. And I feel like that's fair, because I feel like this is a much closer game than the scoreline currently, Ooh. presently suggests. Yes. 
Yeah, I often I often note that uh, it seems to be a blessing in disguise for teams when they don't find too many kills uh, in these weird post plant situations. Yeah, it's it's already if, with the positional context for Fnatic in that round. Even if it were a two v two, that's still such a a tough retake at that. Yeah. And so if they brought that 2v4 suddenly down to a 2v2, you kind of feel like you're working with the momentum of those previous kills. Plus, like, you see it, you just see the the uh, personnel, how, how it's even at that point, 2v2, and you just think, okay, maybe we have a shot at this because sometimes we would go for 2v2s. But, yeah, just that one kill is all they can find, and because of that, they do decide to save, which is generally the wiser choice in those kinds of situations. Yeah. It's like getting caught committed. Right. In poker. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I see it happening on Inferno a lot, but we get a trade, well, not quite a trade per se, but at least a, an attempt to equalize the situation on the numbers, and Fnatic will be operating from behind here, so that, and again, like, one thing you always have to remember in Town Strike is how many players are on each team, how much time left on the clock, and it really tells you a lot in terms of options, oh. but there's one less player on the, on the, on the map right now. 3v3, things ev evening up, and it's going to be interesting to see, I was going to say what Heroic actually do with this, but they're not getting any respite. There's not any time to breathe here to really set themselves up. So, Fnatic keep bringing the fight to them. So, what is the, mo the move now? A lot of holes all over the map. Yeah, it looks like they're posturing for an upper hit. I think that there's already one player walking up the hut right now and with that kill from Nico actually it makes it a 2v2 situation a lot of ground has been gained in such a short amount of time for heroic but will they make the right choice to continue pressuring that upper site actually uh nope they have actually outmaneuvered Fnatic by moving down the vent as well that was another option that was available for them and it's the one that they take here now Fnatic are in a 2v2 situation but with really so little ground looks like it'll be an approach from ramp for JW and Crims at this point, but let's see how the positions from Heroic hold up. And Fnatic does have a smoke and Molotovs and a flash to really flush out positions here. See the Molotov behind near Silo. He goes in a good spot, but doesn't take out Crims. Crims will take him out. Now Borb's in a terrible situation, smoked out. Both the bombs planned for him. Any oh. consolation, he does spam through the smoke. Now this looks like it's going to be uh, safe. So nice recovery there from Heroic. Oh, okay. Man, these rounds are just... <laughs> How many times are we going to see a lower bombsite plant covered by a smoke and someone just barely <laughs> defusing or barely getting the kill? It's <laughs> That just seems to be the recipe of this game thus far. And... Uh, Heroic are able to achieve their fourth round because of it. Uh, good maneuvering from them. They were able to read that situation out well. And despite having good control towards that upper bomb site, I feel like they could have opted towards either one at that point. But they decide to go towards lower, and it gives them a, a very nice post plant at that. Yeah. I think if Heroic can limit some of the the picks that they've been kind of given to Fnatic, uh, they probably will have a little more success on the T side. You saw earlier in the last round... You know, one got picked at Squeaky Door, one got picked, you know, elsewhere, and they just have to work with that. So maybe position themselves where they're able to trade kills just a little more efficiently instead of, like, being all spread out, maybe more partner up. Just try to guarantee kills at least until that mid-game where it's a two-on-two, three-on-three situation. Yeah, it's it's so cool. It's like uh, the old, you know, that that phrase, you know, styles makes fights. And with Fnatic, I feel like that's just always just part of it because they they, they just have such a uh, a fun style to watch in terms of the mid rounds. And that's that's kind of been happening here. We a lot of situations where we get these like three v threes um, where people are walking around in all of these like weird positions. No one knows where anyone is. Makes for a very compelling round and. They don't have much utility or weaponry to really work with in this case, but that said, you know, there's an MP9 and Brawl, and we've seen how far that can take Fnatic. Okay, will get the pick on the JW, and that's going to make things a little bit easier now for Fnatic, uh, for Heroic, as Tessus is in a really forward position here. He might be able to catch one off guard, <laughs> and he might... Is he just... There's, like, two players po that he can possibly frag here that have no idea that he is in this position. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. 
And that's that's that. So now they know what Tessis is, but it's a 5v3. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a terrible situation for Hrims right there. Just teammates are around him, and he still gets picked off in the back. Well, one trade in the direction of Fnatic, though. They bring it to a 3v4. Tessis still has this position, though, at Heaven, and it's such a tricky one for Fnatic to deal with. But the hit is actually going towards lower right now. Golden with a well-placed Molotov. That forces Borup out of his position. Now he has to play the Valley. Could opt to go towards Emo, but he's still just going to hold his ground right there. He's able to pick up one. And Fnatic with a uh, dire retake attempt that probably should not be advised. Flusha just trying to keep himself alive. Nice shot, actually, onto Tessis. Does take down that pesky player, but it's a little too little too late at this point. And Heroic will find their fifth round. It just feels like uh, in these super close circumstances, it was a lot of it was going Fnatic's way earlier in this game, and now it's going Heroic. So good stuff from them to recover, and they found some momentum here on this T side. It's just so unfortunate for them in some of the earlier rounds, and... It's good to see that they uh, they bounce back in the way that really luck should happen. And uh, Flusher after that kill is actually going for the AK on the roof, but he, he got picked off, I think, just before he could get away right. by Cadian. So that's actually pretty big because otherwise there'd be two uh, AKs in this round for Fnatic. It's a round where otherwise perhaps they don't really want to invest uh, really anything at all. But but uh, two AKs, that, that could have been a, a... I mean, it's Fnatic. That could have been a game changer. But... Yeah. Regardless, we'll see if Heroic can truly capitalize on their favorable position. With that outside aggression, that's going to tell uh, Heroic some things. It's going to tell them that there are like at least three players outside at the beginning of the round. So, let's see what they'll do with that information. So far, it's not looking like they want to make any, any moves. Looking out for any sh further shenanigans from Fnatic's side of things. Taking it slow. Anti-Ecos, even though you've got so many advantages, just feel very stressful. Definitely, because pistols can be random. JW tries to sneak in with the kill, but misses. Two kills exchange for both teams, actually. Now Flush, it gets tagged just a little bit, but able to fall back. He's running. And now he has to make a move. And Borup takes him out. Oh my god, it's happening. Oh, oh this is so oh. scary. <laughs> Brolan can't quite find the finish there, but it's a two versus two. Once again, another crazy situation is is on the cards here as Fnatic try to recover this one, but it's all about getting the bomb down first. It's ample time to do so, but JW might be able to stop them out right. Indeed, he's found the bomb, and Storn is up to him now. Good trade, good trade. Now it's the one versus one. 30 seconds for the plant. No idea where that last player is. Storn has to make, so he's going to have to just go for it though. He's not got the time to check everything, to play it safe. You've got to take the gambles. And every moment that you wait at this point, the closer the enemy can get. Brown's going to hit the plant. He's got to open the door though. There's Sao Q! Ooh, oh my close. god, I thought that, that, that connected. So I thought it connected. <laughs> that was so close. Such a close shot there. And that's the danger of letting Brolin have an AK though. Uh, two kills in the round, and man, Fnatic, that was such a crazy lobby crunch timing from them. I, I think they were just primed and ready for such a long time, and when Heroic finally made some kind of indication towards what site they wanted to hit, which may have been an upper hit at that point, it just felt like Fnatic crunched on them just then and there when some of the nades were being pulled out. Uh, a crazy double entry, I think, from the Fnatic side, and almost bringing it back is down, but unable to do so, and... It's a tight one at that, and Heroic will still have money to buy in this round, thankfully. But it's not a, uh, it's by no means a perfect buy. I think there's a player, uh, Katie, in there with a Deagle. So, uh, on the other hand, Fnatic, they were going to be buying in this round anyways, and they're able to, uh, really just carry over that single AK from the previous round. You see, Heroic's kind of trying to do their outside default, but this side, uh, they're going to go for an upper pinch right away from outside. Crims will take out Nico. Braun taking out Testus. Just a barn burner up here. Yeah, just absolute madness here. Chaos on the upper bomb side, as oft it will look like when T side rushes in there. Cadian, what is what is he up to here? Is he's kind of separated from Storm. He's sitting in the upper bomb side by himself at this point. But it's a two v two, so 
<laughs> Again, at this point, it's like, there's so much that's unknown. And speaking of which, this is why Fnatic thrives in these situations. It's because of people like, well, it's basically Flusher. He just can be anywhere and everywhere. It's very confusing. And Storm's going to get punished here. I mean, what can you do about that? Like, you just, like, what can you do? There's nothing you can do. I can't stress how smart that was of Flusha to check that angle outside for Kadian. Because Kadian got a kill outside. And then it's probably about 15 seconds um, kind of went by. And then still he clears everything all the way just to be sure. And to be at the end, he literally kills him at the last spot he was going to check outside. Which is by that T-side box. Yeah. So, like, a normal person probably wouldn't have gone all the way to the length like Flusher just did. You know, swing all the way outside of the wide just to try to get that kill. Yeah, Kadian probably thought he was uh, playing a good timing game at that point. That he could have just waited there, maybe connected with Saun uh, through mini. But, oh, two opening kills from Roland there. Uh, right through the door. Looks like it was supposed to be some kind of door drop, vent drop for her side. But that just gets stopped right in its tracks. And... Good stuff from Fnatic here. Looking to put themselves at 10 rounds in the half. It's just Tessis and Nico that remain. And they have a lot of ground to make up at this point. The bomb is right there in the squeaky smoke. Nico can't retrieve it safely. I think he would have to expose too much of his body. And Tessis, wow, 180 is able to pick up one, but that just still leaves Nico in a 1v4 situation. He has a minute on the clock, so he has quite a few options. Would love to see him uh, try to make this interesting, but at the end of the day, it's a very tall order. And in the smoke comes Brolin to take him down. And Fnatic will put themselves at a 10-5 half, and we'll be on a quick break to see who takes map two in this series. All right, 10-5 half. We back. And we are back, exactly. We're ready. And Heroic, they'll be on the CT side of their map pick here. A lot of close rounds going in the way of Fnatic. We'll see if Heroic, if luck can be on their side this time around. Will they get the smokes into Fuse this time? Will they be the ones that upset Fnatic as they spray desperately into those foggy, foggy bomb sites? Well, that's a good start for Heroic. He got that first opening kill. The trade just as quickly, though, from Crims. He, he gains a lot of ground, and he's going to be pressuring towards heaven here. So that's, that's always really annoying. It, it does attract a lot of attention for the CTs. You don't want to get that, or you don't have to worry about a heaven flying in. Well, doesn't have to worry anymore. Storm is going to take him down, and they'll make their way down towards the ramp to try to find access towards that lower bomb site. But it looks like they're going to be turning on the dime here to try to find the flanking player in oh. Storm. Fantastic headshots found by him, though, to lock it down. And that's really cool. For me, like, it's going to cause the Heroic to win this round because I, I kind of want to see a little bit of... I feel like it's justice. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of justice because so many close rounds that they lost in the first half, but... It starts with a good pistol, that's for sure. Yeah. It takes a little bit of a pressure off your second round. I mean, it's still, you know, second round still pretty dangerous, but on a map like Nuke, maybe not as bad as other maps. Yeah. And no, no bomb plant being allowed uh, either, so Fnatic can't bust out those hero AKs. Uh, it should be a pretty clean affair. Just a couple upgraded pistols on the side of Fnatic. I'd love to see them just take their time with it. Heroic using a lot of utility early on in this round. Just burn, burn that cash away from the CTs and uh, make it a little, just a little bit more costly. At the end of the day, probably not going to be accomplishing too much. You gotta chip away at the old block, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, chip away. That's a nice first kill. But now, Kadian with 17 HP runs back, stays alive. That's important, staying alive, guys. Does a good job at that. Oh, MP9, I haven't seen that gun in a while. Or five. Whatever, MP5, you're right. I, that's that's how long, it, I, I don't ever see anyone <laughs> use that gun, ever. It's bad. <laughs> I was surprised when like we saw so many people, I mean, when it first came out, I was like, I understand that everyone, you're all equipping it, but it is just a bad. worse than the MP7. And MP9. Statistically, it's just an MP9, yeah. Yeah. So, the only thing is for spraying through smokes, I guess, but... It's literally only good for that. If you're some weird, aggressive, sneaky <laughs> player... Oh, okay. Well, one kill going away of uh, Fnatic. Uh -oh. Will they be able to find more? Okay. This is getting a little bit hairy. Maybe Fnatic can actually get a bomb plan off of this. It'll be Stown up to bat, and he takes down three. A triple for him. So, good stuff, and... Uh, yeah, MP5, it, it's bad. It's a bad gun. <laughs> it's not a great <laughs> gun. I, I use it once, and it was, it was like, nah. 
Yeah. No thanks. Running and shooting with it is so inaccurate, which is like the whole appeal of SMGs for the most part. Yeah. But on this map, if, if you're playing on the CT side, you've got those FBI models, you've got the FBI MP5 <laughs> skin, you feel like you're about to dish out the punishment. <laughs> you're LARPing. You're yeah. going to arrest yeah. someone. Okay. You have mace in this game. You know, spray people with mace. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, some interesting, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> um, Instead of a Zeus, you get a mace kind of a skin for it. You arrest them. You don't kill them. You arrest them. You know, <laughs> okay. handcuff them. They're out of the out of the round. Well, it's actually it's only three rounds separating these two teams right now, and Heroic do have the this is the this is like the economy round in the sense that they keep those SMGs. They try to maintain those. They want to win the round and upgrade. With what Fnatic are carrying, they will they will accept the disadvantages of the SMGs, but maybe not in certain cases. Because spots like this are fantastic for the SMGs, and we'll see a double coming out of Tess is definitely getting his money's worth out of that one. And it's a four versus two in favor of Heroic now, so they're in an enormously beneficial position, and it's going to take something pretty special for Fnatic to to kind of move the mountain that is now this round. Okay, Nate. he knows. Yeah. A good awareness there from Kadian. And yeah, that's a that's a big round for Heroic because like you said, they're they didn't upgrade into it. They didn't I think they only had to buy a it's single gun. And they picked up three AKs, it looks like. That's huge. Yeah, that's that, massive. That that is huge. Uh, it's so important on Nuke to just have that economy. You can stop those upper rushes and then have more utility for the late round. Uh, for the ramp player especially, you want to just keep cycling through those nades. Keep, keep hold of that ramp position as long as you can in the round. Heroic will be able to do just that as they now have full economy. Just great buy from them. And Fnatic, they will test that ramp hold though. That'll be Tessis. He's looking for something, but the spray is not that strong. He's only able to find a couple frags, but it might just be good enough. Uh, four versus two. Heroic looking pretty good right now. Nice kill from Brolin. There's still a way to recover this. There's loads of time. They have the round position, but Nico's found his forward aggression, and he's going to finish off the round with a couple of headshots. Great stuff from him. Good awareness, good decisive play, and Heroic are straight back into this one, and Fnatic are off to the worst worst start you can have off of the, the success of these like last few rounds from Heroic. They're in, as you said, their economy is, is going to be... Really awesome. Yeah, it's not a as booming as I really thought, but it's pretty darn good for her. Okay, you can't really ask for too much more in this kind of situation. Uh, we're going to see some just pretty pretty set holds coming out from these players at this point. Uh, just good utility coming out from them. Fnatic with a slightly slower default here, not the early smokes to come out. Nico, though, on the AK towards outside, that can be just so deadly with that one-shot headshot potential. And he'll be supported from Kadian, who's coming up from secret right now with this AWP. We'll see if he's able to find anything. An opening kill, perhaps, and he does wow. find the shot through the Molotov. That's a huge opener for him, as he's now able to fall back, and the thin numbers of Fnatic will have to find a new avenue for success in this one. I'm wondering if he just shot or he actually saw the person, because it's so difficult to see people through the Molotovs, especially if you're down under it-ish, you know what I mean? I feel like he just shot, yeah. in all honesty. Yeah. I, I, that, that is nearly impossible to see. <laughs> Unless he has some crazy video setting. Give me your video settings. Yeah, exactly. I want to know. Yeah. Cool smoke that to the hell of this area, and Nico's going to... Oh! oh. Nico is assassinating Fnatic with that AK-47. Laser precision. JW's trying to find a way to creep out here, but he's, his timing won't work out in his favor this time around. And Nico perhaps has just done too much damage. Uh, Flusher, speaking of which, that could be a good objective for him at this point. Try to do some damage to their ever-growing economy, because if they're allowed to survive with four players here, which they will be, their money is going to be getting out of hand. It is out of hand, in fact. Basically, that was a r weird round from Fnatic. Um, all the spots that they died, there's not really any teammates to help them out. You know, there's one yeah. by the window, there's one in the garage, there's one by the stairs or whatever. It just felt like if they tighten things up a little bit, maybe stop being so spread out, they, they might find a little more success, at least through the mid round and exchanging kills to have them a better chance. 
Yeah, that's the fanatic way, though. Just spreading out, giving a lot of freedom to individuals, and it comes back to bite them there. If you aren't finding those fights, those one-on-one -on -one duels that uh, usually do work out for them, you can see how they get stopped in their tracks there when players like Kadian are picking you apart and Nico on top of that. Heroic just need uh, these players to continue popping off the way that they are. If Kadian continues to find those frags and Nico is able to lock down outside like that, Fnatic will run out of options very quickly in this game. And this is sort of what I was a, a little bit afraid of with Fnatic. We haven't in the series so f in the series of watching them so far seen anything too crazy. It's just kind of basic stuff. And you might need a bit more than basic stuff right now to deal with how well Heroic are playing. So there is the outside smokes. Oh. oh. And well, that's Flusher. That's fl this is Flusher. He just does stuff and <laughs> finds just, weird timings. There. <laughs> I don't understand it. Like he, maybe he is Omen. Yeah. It's like. <laughs> It's teleporting around, and uh, Storm is looking to investigate and see what the hell is going on. Flush has disappeared. He's it's gone. gone. <laughs> it's just totally vanished. <laughs> and uh, well, the situation's got become uh, you know reset. But that repeak of outside is actually a big tell and a helpful thing for heroic. Now they kind of double up on ramp. Canadians just fall down with AWP. There's a kill from Storm. An interesting position for Kadian right here behind the silo with the op. He doesn't quite know if the player got out. He's able to still pick up a single frag, but it will be up to the rest of his teammates to try to close this one out. 3v2 situation, broke advantage, and continue to push that advantage as they find the kill onto JW. Brolin falling as well, and Heroic, in what was looking like a scary round with that opening pick from Flusha, Heroic are able to recover and make it still keep three players alive there. I do wonder if, if um, a fast upper play will come because one thing that like basically flush have found the one hole because there are two players focusing on ramp i think and two players focusing outside and it was just left at the early timings of the round one guy on upper on the upper side maybe that suggests to fanatic hey there's a timing on the upper side right now but at the same time heroic should also realize that that's what they saw so it's it's one of those one of those things isn't it yeah it's a bit of a tell that flush just got right there but he doesn't he also doesn't quite know if there was someone maybe behind the silo. If he would have known the lack of presence on that A site, he maybe would have just pressed on forward. So uh, the information game may lie slightly in Fnatic's favor at this point. They've been seeing a lot of uh, these double outside setups, and I think they're reading that as a potential opening at ramp. They might actually find a timing here, it seems, but they back off as soon as that smoke lands. So it's a slower round in general, though, from Fnatic. Letting some of the utilities sort of dissipate. And now we're going to see a swing from JW. Oh, God, they're really offering themselves up to Kadian on a silver platter. No response, no return whatsoever from Fnatic. All they've gotten out of losing two players is forward position towards that B-bomb site. But the question is, is it worth the, the, you know, is it worth the loss of two players for no trade? Down here at Decon, opening the door as these players are coming down. He might fall, though. His feet were exposed to cramps, and that's a big oh, kill to oh. get. Oh, and the spam through the smoke actually going the way of Tessa, so that's a nice frag to find. There are only two players that remain on the Fnatic side here. It's just Crims now, and he's surrounded by all of these heroic players. There's nothing that he can do. Yeah, that was a pretty good retake by Heroic, and I like what Fnatic was kind of doing it at the start of the round, slowing it down, trying to bait utility. But the problem after that is, um, Heroic probably a good I idea that, well, they're probably not outside, so we don't need Kadian opting outside, so he was at the ramp room, where exactly where Panetta kind of just walked into two free op kills from Kadian. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Eric, that Kadian was just at the perfect position for an op to be at that point in the round. Yeah. He's got to kind of maybe throw a, a, little, a little bait uh, during that late in the round, maybe try to pop flash for something before peeking a common choke point or maybe making noise somewhere else on the map to kind of just yeah. distract enough to maybe keep the CTs just a little off focused towards where you really want to hit. And especially in like a situation where at that time Fnatic were playing really slow and Heroic had no idea where they could be on the map. Kaden's probably going to be in those sort of more rotation-based positions. So, like the the orb that rotates ramp, hell, heaven, um, is very is a pretty common place to find it. 
because because technically you don't need a person outside. They can't plant the bomb outside, right? They have to go upper or lower, so teams can play around that mid round. Like, okay, take outside. We don't care. We we'll just have stronger spots for like whatever he takes or rotates. So it feels like it's crunch time right now for Fnatic. They've not really found success at all with much. Uh oh, oh, is that? Oh dear. I think one of those smokes messed up actually, and that might just uh, seal the round on Heroic. That's just so hard to deal with when you smoke yourself off at the door. But Golden still wants a crack at this one. 1v3 situation on the bomb site right now. He smokes the side of the silo. He has to retrieve the bomb, the bomb which is in front of Squeaky, and he has a lot of time to do so. He'll place himself at the secondary vent right now, and he'll just post up towards heaven. There's still quite a bit of time for him to work with. There's a player in the vent. So that option is cut off from him if he decides to try to go down to the lower site. And at any point, Tessis could just fly up that if, another, if a player from heaven spots Golden at that position as well. Golden, though, still just clearing out the angles, looking towards Mini. And he's going to check down the vent, and Tessis is there and waiting. How's it not a headshot? Yeah, honestly, it, toes? It, it doesn't. <laughs> what's so weird is that, like, I feel like that happens a lot if you shoot from above, but if you shoot from below, it's instant headshot. It doesn't matter where you shoot. It's just yeah. like instantly headshot. I just... Very un unintuitive. But... Such is life. Such is life. Say lovey. E even if he gets that headshot, still so difficult. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, yeah. Those 50-50s. May have gone the way of uh, Fnatic in the first half, but the second half, it just does not seem like it's, it, it is working out for them at all. It's like eight rounds in a row or something now, right? Yeah. God damn. They're really, really focused right now on the CT oh side. Oh, oh, oh. Woof. That's someone get the aloe vera. That's, that stings. That's going to burn. All right, Tessus, a little bit of insult to injury there at the end, shooting the dead body. Haven't really seen that at all today thus far, but Tessus is the first one to bust it out. And uh, will it come back to bite him? The BM usually does, from my experience. <laughs> so we will see. Well, did Fnatic... Will that light a fire underneath Fnatic? Because they need something at this point. They need some... Because their game plan, it's not working out. They need some kind of moral edge. They need something to... Uh, really get them going because this game is all heroic at this point. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly been quite troubling. Slow starts, or slower start from Fnatic. Uh, that doesn't work. It feels, it feels bad, man, right now. It feels real bad. Fnatic with so many very various plays attempted. It's not really working out. Kadian lurking outside. What an angle there from him. Unexpected. And now that's two players lost. They can't even really default off of this. And now Nico. Oh, God, oh. Look, at, look at Nico's position. If it was ever even necessary. <laughs> it's not even necessary for him to do anything from there. But he's he can just win the round. Oh, oh what? Kadian. Oh. Let's go. He wants to win. That's that amazing. is fantastic, isn't it? Wow. Yeah, Heroic's doing just an amazing I job of mixing it up. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It felt like after a while, Kadian just started going for shots just to enable Nico. Just say, if I die, it's fine, Nico, you'll pick him up. But then he's just like, oh, wait, you know what? I can just kill them too. <laughs> he's killing everybody in the <laughs> process. But imagine the confidence. If you know that, like, you can just die. Yeah. It's like, yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. It feels good. For sure. You can just DM a little bit. Just making those peaks with the op just feels so... It's just instantly gratifying. Uh... Fnatic, though, they need to win five in a row to try to send this one to OT, or Heroic will secure themselves a spot at CS Summit. If Fnatic do drop this, by the way, if you guys are just tuning in, they do have a chance in the uh, the lower bracket of this. They've secured themselves a spot in that, potentially, which will be played out tomorrow. But as for today, Heroic look to try to set themselves up for a future at the RMR event. Here you go. Oh, this is not Valorant. You can't shoot off of a ladder. <laughs> Borov there will be making his way outside for the swing. He gets himself too, but it's a decent trade situation for Fnatic. They've managed to find a lot of space here to work with and a bomb plant. Nice backstab oh, wow. from Storm, though, coming in from Squeaky, leaving Golden to do everything. He's got to lead by example, but he's got a MAC-10 against three players. 
We need to see some flush of stall antics with this SMG if he has if he's to have any hope to save this. A few bullets already gone. He's got very little left. Back to the clock, and it's just so hopeless. Wow. Kaden finishes it off with the AWP, 16 to 10, and indeed, heroic have toppled Fnatic, just as I predicted. <laughs> <laughs> uh, rub it in, rub it in, Dan. Yeah, good call, good call from you there. Fnatic do fall, but they'll have a chance tomorrow. Let's not forget, and uh, heroic will be moving on to CS Summit proper, I would suppose. This is uh, stage two, by the way, if you guys are unfamiliar with the format. This is more or less the regional qualifier for the event. And uh, what Heroic have done is just secure themselves now for the regular group stage, which will be coming up in just a couple of days. Fnatic, though, they'll be playing tomorrow, and we will see more of that. Any, any closing thoughts, though, guys? Uh, Heroic played amazing. Yeah. I thought, especially on the Nuke CT side, they were really awesome at changing it up. Sometimes stacking outside, sometimes stacking inside. And Fnatic didn't really get a read on their T side of how to attack Heroic. And I, I think if Fnatic um, you know, wants to be a team of that kind of caliber, maybe toss more fakes. I don't see fakes too often, or at least not today from them, where they can bait rotations or bait some kind of movement and then try to pick. Because this is pretty straightforward from Fnatic. And I mean, if it doesn't work for 10 rounds, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something different. I think for me, it's really straightforward. I think Heroic just wanted it more, I think. And we know Fnatic's capable. Yeah. And we know they're very capable. Flusher did a lot of crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like yeah. he did some <laughs> insane stuff in this game. But but I think her you can tell the hunger and the passion from the Heroic team and players. And, and so I'm actually really happy to see them doing well. Yeah, it felt like they had a very comprehensive game plan going into this from their CT side to their T side. Even on train, to an extent, they knew what they wanted control of. And on nuke, can definitely say the same. It's just that a lot of rounds didn't go their way. This could yeah. have actually been a completely a dominant nuke game. But Fnatic were able to escape by the skin of their teeth in more than a couple instances, actually. So, uh, man, that could have been a total slaughter. But I think that's going to be it for us today. And... Uh, we will be heading to the NA broadcast uh, in just a moment's time, but you'll be seeing more from us in the following days. So I think it's going to be Potter, Fifth Lauren, and Moses coming up today for the rest of the day. So hope you guys enjoy, and we'll be heading to a break.